So the interesting insight um, in my recent chat with uh, Mary Ruddick um, about the you know honey consumption of the Hudsons and stuff like um, in that regard, uh, I actually thought that they were consuming a bit more, but uh, she sort of corrected me um, and put me right. I'll just share that video for a sec. I, I suspected that it was a very small amount, but um, probably the whole the whole bit, the whole bit probably mm -hmm. constituted probably fifty grams, and there was probably about five or five or six grams in terms of sugar in there. So I thought it was you know five or six grams, which still is very low compared to a hundred grams that some in the carnival community have been promoting in terms of uh, honey, or in terms of honey. Or at the most i would say i, I mean I you saw what, you saw what you ate high. you saw what you yeah ate. yeah it wasn't much at all it didn't taste like five grams because gra five grams that's a teaspoon of sugar that that will actually taste sweet it tasted more like two okay. uh, of course it's uh, partly seasonal but it's not you know so often i had read as i'm sure you have that the hudza eat uh, honey so much honey and so much fruit and so many vegetables and it's all seasonal and really their primary food is meat regarding regardless of the season That's right. so even in this season we're at the tail end of the berries we didn't see any uh, at all uh, on the any of the days that we were with them but they didn't go out looking for these things they went out looking for meat and if they found other things on the way uh, maybe they would get it maybe they it's wouldn't. a bonus it, it's a bonus but it's not like it's even less than a bonus because we passed hundreds of baobab trees and they weren't eating the seeds which are delicious uh they weren't eating the powder they won't go they weren't going for the water all the time they went once in the entire long day hike and uh and yeah so there was lots of things they could have been eating that they weren't they were going for the baboons to eat them so very different uh, yeah, and so with the honey, uh, sometimes they would go and get it. There were lots of honey hives that we passed or beehives that we passed, but they didn't stop at any of them but one. So, so, so it's not. So do you, so do you think they did it for, for you guys, or or do, do you think? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think they wanted to show us. We had asked about the honey. It's not really the season, so yeah, I think they showed it for us. Uh, whereas everything else was kind of what they were doing anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually see that you know my sort of my sort of take you know considering the things that paul's been saying and a few other people have been saying about you know honey consumption amongst the the hudsers and stuff like that you know thankfully you know mary put me in my place and corrected me she said no it's not five or six grams it's uh it's two grams you know it's not that that and that's not their focus you know, it's a treat maybe here or there, but it's not their focus. It's not 100 grams every day, you know, this sort of nonsense. And it's seasonal as well. So, you know, it's a very dangerous message to, to be promoting out there high levels um, of honey consumption, in particular for two reasons. One, it drives visceral fat. Two, it's very high in deuterium, you know. It's just pretty much nonsense you know it should be counterintuitive but uh, for some people unfortunately they have jumped on certain bandwagons and tried to make a bit of a career around it now just quickly show you just one study back into this area This is a study actually, in terms of um, consuming fructose sweetened, non-glucose sweetened beverages, um, increases visceral adiposity, um, lipids, and increases insulin sensitivity in overweight obese humans. So the last thing we wanna be doing is in the carnival community promoting this sort of junk. One, that it engages a Randall cycle, two, um, it just basically is going to drive um, visceral fat. 
Now I'm just going to show one, which is in figure one, B. And this is basically it. So we can see basically from baseline, um, if you're eating glucose or fructose, your total fat will be much lower on glucose compared to fructose. That doesn't surprise me because glucose, only excess will be converted to fat. The rest will go into glycogen, depending. Subcutaneous fat is the majority of what glucose produces. Doesn't produce as much visceral fat. Fructose, on the other hand, produces less subcutaneous fat and far more visceral fat. It's quite clear. All research shows this over and over again. You know? So where glucose, excess glucose may make you a bit more chubby, you may look a bit more fatter, but it's healthy fat in comparison. As long as it doesn't go too, too um, extreme. But uh, when it comes to visceral fat, you may be a tofi. It may not be as visible because around the organs and stuff like that. But you know what? You may not look as plump, but when you check inside, things aren't looking good. I can tell you. And that's the the real the real danger of fructose. And it's the thing that we've noticed even in Southeast Asia where they've got less capacity to actually store um, energy in terms of fat. So what happens is, you know, they can become diabetic much more faster. And that's what we've seen, you know, and it's not the glucose consumption. They've been eating rice for um, plenty of years. It's basically um, the high fructose or the, the beverages, especially when you take a look at countries like Indonesia, Malaysia and stuff like that, because of the Muslim faith as well, you know, um, beverages, soft drinks are the order of the day. That's what's driving um, uh, diabetes. So you definitely want to keep away from the, um, uh, from the fructose. Now, in a lot of those studies where they have, um, you know, they throw in the seed oils, well, we know the high in deuterium, they damage the mitochondria and sort of, in a sense, in an indirect way, affect, um, uh, you know, the energy metabolism, dis derange the system and all that of the rats. But the reality is, you know, if you eat normal animal fats, you don't get this. Um, even if you eat plant fats that haven't gone through an industrial process, you don't get this. It's really the industrial crap. That's actually um, the, the biggest problem. Um, you know, olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil have been around in these societies for a very long time. You know, it's basically the industrial seed oils that do damage in one, in, at one um, level. And then fructose is always driven. Um, fat accumulation. We know that. I mean, um, fish in the Amazon eat fruit and become large, you know, all sorts of bears eat shitloads of fruit deliberately to, um, to, to force high levels of insulin resistance to basically become fat. And it's basically because they will combine sugar and fat at the same time. It's what the standard diet is, you know? So there is the Randall cycle at play um, for sure. But uh, even without the, the, the direct effect of the Randall cycle, just on you know taking glucose or fructose. Quite clearly, um, fructose in excess amounts will cause fatty liver. You know, so we've seen it in plenty of experiments. So we need to stop this bullshit about fructose being okay, and especially honey, which is a high deuterium and high. Um, uh, you know, fructose um, source. So it's got the two double whammies, so to speak. So we need to basically get it out, get the message out into the carnival community that, you know, basically the Hudsons do not consume the sort of levels of honey that people make out that they do. It's BS basically. Anyway, see you guys.